Well, good morning. Today I want to talk to you about true spiritual warfare and maybe what it is and what it's not. And you know, the Bible says that we live in, in this world, and Jesus even said that in this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. And right before that, he said, in me you'll have peace. In the world you'll have tribulation. So tribulation is going to come at the Christian. Things are going to come. There is, we live in a world that, that's uh, very contrary to the wisdom of God. That's, that's seeking for life in all the wrong places. Okay. It's seeking um, to clothe itself with life. And so as a, a believer in Jesus... One who believes that life is only found in Jesus Christ, not in the world, not in the things of the world. You live in a world that's full of, of just a contradiction towards that wisdom. And so <clears throat> what I'm saying is this warfare oftentimes it, it doesn't come from the devil per se, like we're still fighting the devil. That's what he'd like us to do. He'd like us to, to spend all of our Christian uh walk as a distraction fighting a defeated foe someone that Christ has already defeated okay remember when Jesus says he's coming the devil's coming and but he has nothing in me why did he say that because Jesus was saying that his heart was already fully persuaded about where his life was his life was in the father it wasn't in the world it wasn't in its flesh it wasn't what he could accomplish or the things he had and so a lot of what I'm seeing, what we've uh, uh, defined as spiritual warfare, really is us being persuaded to believe something that's not true. It's us stumbling over the truth about something. And the fruit of that will be great disappointment. It will be um, anxiousness. It'll be all these things. But really, if our heart is kept firmly persuaded about where true life is, as Jesus understood where true life was, then in Jesus we will have peace. In the world we'll have tribulation, but in Jesus we'll have peace. And the peace of God can't be uh, shaken or, or really uh, stole. He can't steal it from us. Nothing can steal our peace. Unless we allow the enemy and his the word he speaks to us, or the word we believe, the lie that we believe, causes us then to manifest a fruit that's not the fruit of God's life. And when I was thinking about this, I started thinking about James 4.1, talking about spiritual warfare. Here it is. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your own desires for pleasure, that war in your members? There it is. If you want to know where a lot of the warfare is, it's the warfare that comes from your own desire and your own members lusting for life where life can't be found. It's stumbling over the truth. That's why Jesus says the devil's coming, but he has nothing in me because I know where the life is. Even when Jesus was faced with the cross, he still knew that the life was in the Father and into his hands Jesus committed his his life he says Abba father into your hands I commit my spirit so the devil can't really steal our joy or our peace what he does is he comes to talk smack to us he comes to to uh, speak lies to persuade our hearts that we have lost something for life when the truth is if we're sealed in the Holy Spirit and we're in Christ we have everything we need for life and godliness we lack nothing for life and so 2nd Corinthians 10 3 6 is a big scripture on this spiritual warfare that goes along with this he says for though we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal they're not carnal they're not shadow boxing with the devil but they're mighty through God mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds who's pulling down the strongholds greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world God is the one pulling down the strongholds okay that tried to come against us try to set up camp in us 
casting down imaginations, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, against the truth that's in Christ, bringing into captivity every thought, there it is, to the obedience of Christ, to the obedience of Christ, and having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. What's he talking about obedience here? He's talking about obedience to the faith or or continuing to allow your heart to con- to be persuaded that we are complete in Christ that we lack nothing in life in Christ that we have received his fullness we're complete in Christ and no matter what happens in this world we don't look to this world for life we can have things and that doesn't move us we cannot have things that doesn't move us just like Paul said I've learned to be content no matter what state that I am in so Jesus shows us the way of life and I was thinking of also Romans 5 1 through 5 he says this and I would have never thought of this as a quote-unquote spiritual warfare scripture but here it is therefore having been justified by faith this is someone that's fully persuaded that they have been justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ that peace can't be shaken through whom also we have access by this faith into the grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of glory of God and not only that but we glory in tribulations right in the middle of them knowing intimately knowing that tribulation itself anything that comes against us will only produce more life in us produces more perseverance and perseverance character and character hope and it says this now hope this the hope of God does not disappoint the persuasion that comes from God will never leave you disappointed (laughs) because the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit when you know greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world when you know the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit no matter what happens in life as your heart is kept fully persuaded about the truth then you cannot be shaken because you've received a kingdom that